Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to JKS Tech Lab. Today, I want to show you how to integrate um, AWS Identity Center with Okta. I feel like the best way to learn how to use different platforms is to actually get in there and use it. You could read about it, but actually setting things up is how, at least for me, um, how I like to learn things. So uh, what I wanted to do was actually learn more about Okta and how it integrates, you know, and how it just the platform in general. So I figured it'd be best to integrate it with AWS since, you know, Identity Center is replacing uh, AWS SSO and all that stuff. So what we want to do is set up Okta as an external identity source. So right now in my my dev AWS in environment, um, the identity source is just, it's just the directory. So we want to go here and change that. And we can see right here, it says direct. Um, it's using, you know, Identity Center directory. Um, but we want to change that. So I'm going to say change identity source. And you can see the options are, you know, obviously identity center, but then uh, Active Directory or an external IDP. That's what we're going to use because we're going to use Okta. So I'm going to just click next here and you're going to get the information. I can download the metadata file and upload it or I can just copy what I need. The main thing that I'm going to need is the ACS uh, URL and the issuer URL. So I'm going to go over here to my Okta dev environment. And obviously, you know, like I always like to say, when you're setting up stuff like this in an enterprise environment, um, you don't want to be sharing all this information, but this is dev and, you know, we're just going through the process, but you want to make sure you're sharing it with people that you trust and applications that you trust and you, you know, things that you can control. So we're just going through this. So what I want to do is add uh, an application because Okta actually has an integration for Identity Center, which is great. We could have set it up, you know, using a custom, but there's a there's an app. So we're just gonna browse the app catalog in Okta and I'm gonna look for the AWS and specifically I want the Identity Center. So we can see it right there. And I'm gonna say add integration. And I could change the name if I want to. I'm gonna just leave it. It's fine. Click done. And then basically what I want to do is set up the actual sign on. So I want to go here and this is the information I need to put in. So I'm gonna click edit. And we're not going to use a, a default relay state. We could if we wanted to, but it's, it's fine. We're just going to go down here and put in the eight. ACS and the issuer. So, um, and if you're not aware, ACS stands for Assertion Consumer Service URL. Uh, but yeah, we're going to copy that and drop it in there. Like I said, since this is the dev environment, you know, I'm going to go through and delete this stuff when I'm done. But if you're doing this in a in enterprise, you want to make sure you're keeping this information, you know, on a need to know basis. And saying uh, what credentials are we using? Octa username. What are we allowing, you know, create an update? I'm going to say save. And for the AWS side, basically, we just need this certificate and we need the metadata. <clears throat> now, if you're not familiar with Okta, uh, in order to get the metadata that you need, you actually go right here where it's showing the certificate, click on actions, and you can view the IDP metadata. So we could either download this and import it or we can just copy it. So this is a pretty straightforward standard metadata file. You got your entity ID, you got your bindings and you got your certificate. So the main thing we need is the entity ID, which is the issuer. And we're gonna need our sign on URL. So I'm gonna just copy these out. And you just you just want the URL. You don't need, you know, all the extra stuff. So sign in URL. Well, actually, this one's the issuer. So we're going to put that here. That's the issuer. And then we're going to go back over here and get the sign in URL. And you can see this one says a sign on, you know, single sign on service. This is the post. So that's what we're using. I'm going to click copy. And we're going to go back over here, paste this in. And then we also need to upload the certificate. Um, so, you know, Okta and AWS, they, AWS say, yes, this is actually coming from Okta because I, you know, I have a certificate or whatever. So I already downloaded the certificate. Um, so I'm gonna just upload that. And 
And you can see right here, it's check. It says it's good. Last modified today. Because that's when I downloaded it. And then we're going to click next. And now uh, what it's telling you is because you could you can change this after you've already set up users in AWS and you're using their directory. So it's telling you what's going to change. It's telling you you're, you're making your identity um, source external. It's telling you that you can only update identities through your IDP now, no longer directly through um, AWS. And it's just telling you a bunch of stuff that you need to be aware of if you've never um if you if you've never changed this before like you know for your mfa that's going to be handled by your idp basically everything's going to be handled by your idp so you just need to make sure that you know what you're doing and um we're going to click accept well i usually just copy and paste and put it in there but yeah and we're going to say change so now we've actually changed this we can see that we're using the external identity provider um, and that configuration is pretty much done. Let me close this metadata. And yeah, the next thing that we want to do, though, is we want to actually set up provisioning. You see right here, you know, SAML is set up, but provisioning from Okta to AWS is not set up yet. So what we want to do is go over here and set up provisioning. And you can see over here, it, it, AWS is going to give you some prompts. It's going to say, hey, do you want to set up automatic provisioning so you can get your users into AWS, you like, yeah, we want to do that. So we're just going to click enable. And basically we need two things. We need the endpoint and we need the token. So I'm going to copy this endpoint. Go over here um, under provisioning for the application. We want to configure API integration. And basically this is going to allow us to use Skim to provision our users. And Skim is, um, was it system for cross domain identity management? I think that's the, the full official name of it. We say skim, but basically it allows you to take your your user data information and automatically send it to you know a, a destination as long as they're integrated. So that's what we're doing here. So I'm gonna click enable. And we can see right here it says base URL. I'm gonna show you something with this specifically, but it says base URL and then API token. And again, like I said, these these are things that you want to keep secret in an enterprise situation. Um, we're just testing. I'm going to go through. I'm going to delete all this stuff once I'm done. But for you, make sure that you're only sharing this with people who need it or, you know, applications that need it and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to put that in and watch what happens when I do a test. It's going to fail. It's going to say the URL doesn't match. Um, and, you know, and this is these are the things that I like to come across when setting up different platforms because you learn what you need to do in certain situations. So once I got that error, I had to research it and figure out that I need to take this off. Just this, just that last <laughs> slash. And now we'll be good to go. So now I can verify it. So you do that, you click save, and then you're going to have to configure what you want to allow Okta to send over to AWS. So once this comes back up, we can see to the app. So basically from Okta, no say from okta to aws what do you want to send um and octa's interface is really really clean so even if you haven't used it before it's kind of it kind of makes sense i do feel like as someone who's you know really familiar with ping identity and stuff like that um it makes it a little bit easier to hop between different platforms because a lot of the stuff is similar it just may look different or they may use different names and stuff like that but um, it definitely makes it easy it's like anything once you learn one cloud environment it makes it easier to learn others once you learn one you know idp or identity platform it makes it easier to kind of transition to others and i just like to learn as many as i can so um, anyway, we're going to go here and edit this and basically we want to do all this. We want to be able to create users. We want to be able to update the user attributes and we want to be able to deactivate users directly from Okta. So if I deactivate a user in Okta, they'll be deactivated in AWS. So, and you can see the attribute mappings and you can go in and configure those if you need to. We're just going to leave that the same because we're just using username um, right now. And we click save. And up here when it comes back to Okta there is nothing so you're not importing anything from AWS you're just pushing your information from AWS over there so now what we can do is let me see the information but what we can do is we can actually assign the user so uh, and again 
since we're just testing, we're going to assign an individual user. But in, a, in an enterprise environment, normally what you would be doing is assigning groups. So you would give groups the access and you would be assigning users to the individual groups. It just makes it easier to manage um, at the group level. So if somebody needs access to something, you put them in a group, that group has access. But just for you know test purposes and demo purposes, we're going to add a specific user. And you can use the, do this directly from the app. Um, or you can go to the user's profile in Okta and add it. We're just going to do it directly right here from the app. So that's where we're at. So I'm going to just say um, assign to people. And I'm going to go in and use this user, John Test. The username is just going to be their, their email address. And I'm going to click save and go back. And uh, so now this user, John Test has access to AWS. And what you see right here, push users is enabled. Um, deactivation is enabled. If we go over here, let me close this. If we go over here and look under our users, we can see that they've showed up. There's John Test, the status is enabled and they were created by Skim. So it happens just like that. Um, you know, obviously sometimes depending on the applications, you may need to do a refresh of the uh, you know, refresh your browser page or something like that to see it, but it's there. So as soon as we added that user over in Okta, now they're in AWS. And what this means is I can now use this user or assign access to this user from within AWS to different applications, different accounts, whatever. I don't have anything assigned, but if we were to go over and log in as this user in Okta, what we will see is a, a little tile, a little icon for AWS. So let's do a uh, And we're just going to sign in. And what you're going to see is once we sign in here, um, you'll see he has that application. Now, in theory, um, what would happen is when I click on this, um, it would SSO me into AWS, but I don't have any, uh, I don't have any application or anything assigned to it, but we can, I'll, I'll just show you what it looks like. So typically you just sign on that. It was signing in um let's see if aws aws is acting crazy right now so it says it's not uss so there's something going on with their platform but what we could do to see if it's working because we didn't get an error saying um they didn't recognize the user we didn't get an error saying you can't log in this is actually an error from aws so something going on with the aws platform you know you know how it goes when you're trying to show something <laughs> something happens but that's fine what we could do is we can actually look at the logs for this application in Okta and we can see if it was a successful sign in. Um, so we can see right there, user single sign on to app, what they sign on to and it was a success. So the SSO successfully worked. There's just something going on with AWS right now, but it's great that you can, you, you know what to look for in your logs. So we can see everything here. We can see um, when the user was synced, we can see the user added to the app. Um, I can even go down and, you know, see all that stuff, everything that was imported, adding the app, all that stuff. So we can see everything. So yes, SSO is working. I don't have anything assigned to the user, but normally, even if you don't have anything assigned to the user, SSO would open up a, it would still open up in AWS and it would just be blank. It would have no applications, but you would be able to go in and manage, you know, MFA devices and stuff like that from uh, AWS. So yeah, like I said, as I'm doing this, AWS is, is being weird, but it's fine. It's there. So you see it there. Now, um, before I go, I want to show you what the deep deprovisioning looks like. So let's go back to the application. And what I want to do is remove this user. Actually, let's do it this way. Let's go to people and we're going to um, remove it from him directly from here. So in Okta, you can go and you can see what applications um, the user has. At least right here. I mean, obviously we can see everything else, but we're just worried about this. What I want to do is remove this user from the application. I don't want them to have access to this anymore. Um, so I'm going to say, yes, I want to unassign it. I'm not deleting the user. I'm just removing their access to this. And now if I go back over here, and look, you know, just refresh. 
I can see I no longer have any apps because I removed that user. But more importantly, if we go over here and look at the users in AWS, we can see that that user is disabled. So that's how skim works. That's how the integration works. Uh, because Okta is the IDP, is managing all of your identity, then everything you do in Okta automatically gets pushed over to um, AWS's Identity Center. So really uh, straightforward integration. Um, but again, just something I like to go through and it, it makes it, it, it just helps you kind of get familiar with the process and the little quirks that you may run into with different platforms and things like that. Like I said, with the trailing slash and it not, you know, properly reading that, that skim URL with that slash on there, removing that makes it work. So just different things like that, that you would only come across when you're actually, um, usually setting stuff up and, and trying to figure out what's going on. So yeah, hopefully this is interesting. Um, if you, if this is something that you're looking at or trying to integrate again, just something I like to share. Uh, it's just a, the best way to learn in my opinion is going in and actually configuring because that's what you that's what you want to do you want to know how to configure this stuff so let me know if you got any questions till next time i'll see y'all later peace